And we are back with another winter holiday collection. This one is from Simplicity. And we are going to take a look at all of the new patterns today. If you are unfamiliar with this series, it's where I go each go through each and every pattern um, and assess it for fit, fabrication. Um, we take a look at the line drawings and the fabric requirements and everything else that you would need in order to like fully assess this pattern. Um, and then we just kind of like gab about whether we like it or not. Um, you guys chat in the comments and I just speak to the video. <laughs> um, if you are new here and this is your first video, your first Inside of the Hem video, welcome. Please leave a comment in this uh, comment section below introducing yourself so that I can get to know you a little bit better. But let's jump right in. They put Mimi G at the top, at the front of this new collection. So she's up first. Uh, she has a Mrs. Knit Tops and Skirts. It looks like there's two size ranges, 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24. So the highest of the smaller size range and the lowest of the higher size range do not overlap. Not my favorite when they don't do that, but I think that that allows them to go up to a 24. So I appreciate that aspect of it. Um, all right, let's take a look at some of these photos. Simplicity's website is still really difficult to navigate. Um, we had hoped that since it's been purchased a couple of times since this website was set up that they would um, have updated it by now to be more like McCall's, but they haven't. So we have to like scan through the photos like this and it's it's a whole thing. But so bear with me. Either way, it looks like we have a pretty straightforward sweatshirt pattern here. It does have the raglan sleeve, but it also has a drop shoulder seam, which is kind of unique for a uh, sweatshirt pattern. Normally it just has the one or the other. Um, this one also has that little V front detail. She has used a coordinating ribbing along the neckline, the cuffs and the hem band. And it looks like there's even some side seam pockets in this top as well. The skirt is a faux wrap, yes. Um, also this band, does this belong to the skirt or does this belong to the shirt? I can't tell. I'm thinking it belongs to the shirt and then the skirt is like tucked up underneath there, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, but it has this little, you know, like swoopy shape to it and it's midi length. So very athleisure friendly, obviously very comfortable. Here is the sweatshirt with a hood and the skirt is mini. You know when it's Mimi, she's going to throw in a mini option. Um, it's just above the knee, though. It's not too, too short. Um, but, man, that sure does look comfy. Here's the gray one from the side, the longer length from the side. And from sort of from the back with the um, purple version, the hooded version. So here is the pattern cover. Here are our line drawings. So you can see, yes, all right, the... Sweatshirt has the ribbing at the waist. The skirt does not. Um, I'll be interested to see if there are any notions other than, well, if there's any notions at all um, to keep this closed. Like, is there a button? Is there a hook and eye? Or is all you've got to keep this on this one little tie situation? <coughs> Excuse me. We can find that out here. Um, mum, 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 notions. Thread. Invisible zipper for B. Invisible zipper for B? Invisible zipper for B. Huh. I am not sure what zips. What, do y'all see anything that zips? I don't see any zippers. That's really confusing. Okay. Um, one and three quarter yards of wide twill tape or ribbon and then two snaps. Okay. So they do have a couple of snaps to help keep this closed. And then this is, either, she used self fabric. You can see that that's, she's got the sweatshirt in here, but you can also get, um, twill tape or something coordinating, um, if you don't want to make your own ties. That invisible zipper though, I don't know where that goes. 
no idea where that goes. Um, and they don't really have like descriptions here to tell us. So we just kind of have to figure it out. But the fabrics are for stretch knits only. Um, they do not give a stretch percentage online, but when you go to the store, they'll have that little like, you know, scale on the back that tells you like how to stretch out the fabric to see if it's got enough. This I got to imagine is pretty light stretch, um, because they recommend fleece, French terry, lightweight ponte, lightweight scuba, and sweatshirting fleece, which all have relatively low stretch quantities. Um, and then A and B neck band, lower sleeve and sleeve bands, all in a stretchable rib knit. Oh, they're also recommending the skirt in a stretchable rib knit, but as you can see, she used the same fabric through and through. Um, I, I don't think that, I think this is the same as this, right? It's not the bands are the same as this, is it? Man, this is really hard to tell. This one... Yeah, I'm pretty sure she just used the sweatshirting for all of them. Maybe she explains that a little bit better in her, um, in her, what's it called? Like, sew along. Um, okay, finished garment measurements. We do have those available. We've got, um, a bust, which is pretty roomy. As you can see, it goes up to 52 and a half inches. And then your hip, close fitting hip on this skirt um, goes up to 48. So there might even be some negative ease in the hip, just making sure that that skirt is nice and hug snug because that is how it is designed. Okay, great. Cute little one to start. This is Mimi's husband, Norris, and it looks like he designed the men's version of this. I don't review men's wear because I don't know what I'm looking for in terms of fit and all of that. But what we can do is just quickly look at this and see his has full on zips, um, zippers here, a uh, zip up uh, jacket really, zips on the pants and the pants also have the breakaways, which I actually think is really so, so cool. Um, we go to a lot of Charlotte Hornets games and this is what all the players are wearing and they, you know, have them either they'll button them all the way down and then scrunch them up or they'll wear them like he has them here, but um, also just want to point this out. Like this is both of these patterns are pretty unisex. Like there's no reason why a woman couldn't wear this and a man couldn't wear Mimi's sweatshirt or skirt for that matter. Um, but so there's a menswear version. There's also this men's vest, which again, vests are very, very on trend right now. A lot of people are getting them, um, like secondhand from thrift stores, but there's no reason why a woman couldn't wear this. You might have to factor in some sort of like, you know, bust situation. But other than that, you should be able to make this vest um, and wear it proudly. Like, like I said, they're very, very on trend right now um, in made out of suitings and all kinds of fun stuff. So um, check that out if you're interested in a vest. Then we have this top. This feels very simplicity. It feels like something we, you know, it's nothing new. Um, the size range is the same as we saw before. It has the square neckline with the elastic in the shoulder. Very wide neckline here. This one has the pleats that open out to create kind of like a, I don't know, swing or a peplum style. And then also very big voluminous sleeves that also have elastic in them. Again, this design is nothing new. We've seen this before. Um, just another take on that. I think what's happening here is kind of what makes it a little bit unique. Um, and certainly, I mean, I think that this would be fun to sew. Um, I like little challenges like this. And especially when you have to be like super, super precise, I actually really enjoy that process. But other than that, this is a pretty straightforward situation. A few different um, sleeve variations, you know, elastic put in different places or no elastic at all. But yeah, it's just a really cute floaty boho type of top. There's the back. Obviously you just pull this on right over your head, no closures. Here is the pattern cover, easy to sew, probably a pretty good scrap buster. Um, well, well, cause of the sleeve. Yeah. Two and a quarter yards, 
is the most, but that's because of the big sleeve. There was one that had a shorter sleeve, but um, that must be this one that's two yards. Oh, you know what? This does take a lot of fabric, too, because, you know, you got to pull all those pleats from somewhere. So, or darts. What are those pleats or darts? I don't know. Um, so, there's that. All right. Fabrics are going to be your lightweight drapey fabric. So batik, chalet, cotton blends, crepe, uh, dotted Swiss would be cute for spring, lightweight linens, silky types. This is going to be one of those patterns that yes, you could make it for the fall for sure. It's interesting that it's in the winter holiday collection, but regardless, it would also serve you well in the spring. This is like a year round top. You know, you've got your short sleeves, and your long sleeves. And then if you wanted to hack it for summer, you could just leave the sleeves off and sew on little like strings to make ties. Then you could have ties and wear it, you know, I mean, really all year round at that point. Um, notions are thread and then all kinds of different sizes and lengths of elastic. We also have single fold bias tape to finish off a raw edge somewhere and then more and more elastic. Our finished garment measurements, we only have the bust, which is really all that matters. And it's 35 inches up to 50 and a half inches. So not the best, but not the worst, considering it's big four. And a Mrs. pattern, not a women's pattern. So cute, right? Okay, now we have this knit top. Really fun, asymmetrical, um, like ruching. Same size, oh no, not the same size range. This one goes six to 14 and then 14 to 22. So again, it does not go all the way up to 24 like the last few we've seen, but these two overlap. So it's like a little bit of give and take. I see pros and cons of both. But high neckline, set in sleeve, and then, which I'm gonna look at this sleeve a little bit. It looks like the shoulder is a little bit long. Like I don't know that all of this is supposed to be there. Um, I think the ruching is really just supposed to go from this shoulder through the middle of the bust and then down just above the waist. And then there's some that crosses back over this way, which is really cool and really fun. And I can see this in like sparkly fabrics, glitter fabrics, sequin fabrics, and it being really, really pretty. But even in this like plain you know, emerald green, which I love emerald green, but um, it's really, really striking. It is giving me a little bit of a higher hem line over here. Um, that's just because they weren't super accurate when um, pulling up this side seam. So I don't, again, it's one of those, I point out like the nitty gritty details in the, these videos. No one is ever going to notice that but us. Um, but I do like to point it out in case that is something that would really bother you. Okay, so we have, again, another sleeve option. This one is a little bit fuller here. And this one also does not gather into the waist seam. So it's a little bit, or the side seam. So it is a little bit looser. And I am getting a bit of a drop shoulder on this. So I think that the it fits the model pretty good um, for that design. See how long it's coming even on the short sleeve version? The short sleeve version is just adorable. I love that. I would totally make this. Um, this is the version the model's wearing. I'm loving this design so much. Here it is in a sweater knit. Oh, can you imagine in a lightweight sweater knit? I'm actually kind of bummed. I just used a lightweight sweater knit that I have um, for something else. This also has to have some kind of closure so that you can get it on and off. So they've done a button with a loop, uh, but you could also do an invisible zipper through here. Um, something to get it so this can get over your head. But look at all these options. So good. So these are the same, right? And then you've got um, sleeve options. And then you've also got two bodice options as well. I mean, technically, you've got three sleeves. You've got this balloon, the straight one, and sleeveless, and then two bodices. So cute. Here's the line drawing. I love all that ruching so much. Okay. Back of the envelope, what do we have? Uh, stretch knits only, such as interlock jersey, ITY bamboo. Now, that makes me pause because if it is out of that, these are like stretchy knits. Interlock is 
100% stretch. Some jerseys can be as well. I would think that if you had a stretchy knit, you would not need this situation in the back. You would be able to pull that on over your head, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that neckline really is that small. Um, so yeah, it would be one of those things you wouldn't really know until you sewed it up, you know, but I would think if your if your fabric is stretchy enough and maybe you have a smaller head than most, <laughs> you would not need to do that extra step in the back. I don't know. You could always sew it up, you know, as part of your muslin, put it on and see how it goes. Um, and then decide if you need to unpick, you know, these first few inches. But yeah, either way, lots of really great options for um, like lightish weight, stretchy um, knits. They did not include like a um, sweater knit in here, but if you had like a really lightweight one, that would be also be really pretty. It's just got, the most important thing with this top is that it drapes. Um, so if you find a fabric that's super drapey, that is what's going to accentuate that design the best. So we have thread, bias tape for the sleeveless version, and don't forget, Stylemaker Fabrics has jersey bias tape. So if you wanted to maintain the stretch quality of your fabric, um, go get some of that. They have it in tons of colors. And then also elastic for this sleeve here. Great little stash buster, View B, the sleeveless one, is only one and one eighths of a yard, which is great for the amount of a statement that that would make. Um, I also love... Um, patterns that use a, just a little bit of yardage for like super special fabrics. So if you found like, I don't know, really expensive like mohair or cashmere or something like that, you could have a nice high quality top um, without breaking the bank. All right. And then we have bust measurements. They are different depending on if there's ruching on the side seam or not. Um, not very much different, only an inch different, but they are different. So 31 to 44 inches. Remember, we're only going to size 22 here and then 32 to 45 and a half. So that's that. Cute. I really like that one. That will go at the top of my list for sure. All right. Now we have this dress pattern. Oh my. Okay. I get that the 90s are back. This might have been not the best version of the 90s to bring back, but we'll take a look. So 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24, back to that original size range. Um, so it doesn't help that they made it in velvet. <laughs> um, and I, this is like some kind of like two-layer sleeve, which kind of in this nude color just looks like her undergarments are slipping out. I don't know. And... I'm big on the model's faces. Like, I feel like if the model really likes it, you can tell even if they're giving model face, you know, and she's just like, can we please be done? I just really want to take this off. Um, the length on it is really pretty. It's just, I mean, it just looks, it looks like, um, oh, what's that movie? The Princess Bride, which, okay, I love The Princess Bride, but this is just not the best version of The Princess Bride. You know, we could have, we could have done the Princess Bride a little bit more justice. But like, you know, prairie fields, milking cows, you know, that kind of vibe. Not 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 conjuring the most romantic images, which I think is what they were probably going for. But the dress itself, the design itself, does have a square neckline, which is beautiful. Um, I, if, you, if we can just like hold your fingers over the screen and cover everything of uh, the sleeves and the waist and all that up. The neckline is really pretty. Um, it's got princess seams, so you know you can get a really, really good fit. A little bit of a higher waist seam, like the natural waist is here. This is sitting a little bit toward like empire waist. And then I think this skirt is just A-line. I don't think it's a circle skirt or anything. This is an alternate sleeve option where it's like her sleeve in the model, on the model, but just longer which could be fun. Um, and then you have this version here, which I think is the one she's wearing. You can see it has the tulip sleeve, but then they put this little thing underneath it and it's just not interpreting well uh, in these photos. It's not reading, this does not look like this. Not to say that this is that much 
better, but it doesn't look like what it looks like on her, that's for sure. Um, I'm here for the double layer, but maybe like the nude layer looks a little too undergarment. Um, maybe something else in there would be better. And then you have this version, which is kind of just like completely different altogether. You have the high neck with the ruffle. So, I mean, you make two dresses that everything's the same except for this neckline. No one's going to know, especially in two different fabrics. Here's the back. It does have an invisible zipper. And here is the pattern cover. Yeah, no, this is a no. I think if I had just seen the line drawings or the illustrations, it would have been a little bit better. But maybe it's the velvet. That, that velvet is so tough. So tough. But there's also some kind of pleating happening here in the back, which is which is nice. Kind of like a nod to like a train detail, but not really. And for those of us that have fuller bums, it gives more ease, more design ease in the hip, in the back, um, than in the front. So that's really nice because then you don't have to worry about sizing up too much and you still get that really slim line in the front, which is super flattering. All right, line, or I'm sorry, uh, pattern envelope, the back of it. Fabrics, they're saying brocade. Oh, I already, I don't know about brocade. That seems a little stiff. Like this back detail would stick away from your body, like a duck. <laughs> Cottons, linens, rayons, sateen, silks, velvet. Uh, I get that they're trying to like, this is holiday, but I think you can do better in the fabric um, choice than they did. Maybe a burnout velvet, if you have to go velvet, would be nice. Hmm. Thread, invisible zipper, and then B and C have four buttons, which makes me think that it's this sleeve has some buttons at the at the hem. Um, two and three quarters, two and a half, almost three yards for this one. Um, so depending on the length and the sleeve and all that jazz, um, will determine fabric requirements. It is lined. The bodice, I think, is fully lined. So that's good. You get a nice pretty finish on the inside. And then your finished bust measurements are 33 to 48 and a half. So uh, close fitting bust um, in a woven fabric. So um, there's that. All right. Next up, we've got... A Dickie set. Okay, so Dickies, I would argue, probably never went anywhere, but have had a bit of a revitalization. People are realizing that you can make a Dickie and have that layered look without all the bulk of having a full shirt underneath. If you don't know what a Dickie is, it's basically like a vest um, with no side seams. So all of this just lays over your shoulders and then you have these little guys here to help keep it around your waist. But you wear them uh, under sweaters. They've got theirs like over um, blouses. Um, it looks like this has a removable collar. Like this is quite a set. Um, you can also use dicky patterns as um, almost like uh, like if you wanted to take, for example, I'm having a hard time explaining this. If you want to take like this design and you want to add it to another pattern, like a pattern mashup, but you want to have all this design in your bodice, you would just take out the bodice from whatever pattern you're using, um, transfer this to whatever the arm size situation and side seam situation and waist seam situation of the other dresses or the other top is, and you can incorporate. You can like mash them up together. Um, so they do have some quite, look at this little sweet little scallop design. Um, so I'm not going to knock the Dickie because I do, <laughs> this, the name is horrible. Um, because I do see a place for them in our wardrobes. I don't like how they just like erase their faces <laughs> my goodness it's so aggressive but I guess that's how it was I don't know look at that 
no eyes. Um, so give it a try if you haven't before. You might be surprised how much you end up wearing them. All right, we've also got a few other vintage dresses. This is a coat or vintage patterns. This is a coat and scarf. Let's just look at the line drawings of these. Um, when there's not models wearing them, it's very difficult for me to analyze them for fit because obviously they just draw them how they're supposed to be fitted without any regard at all to how they were actually designed. So um, for these patterns, we'll just skip to the line drawings and analyze them from here. But you've got lots of great seaming on this coat. My goodness, you have bust darts. You have two on each side, so four waist darts and four fisheye darts and four L or two for each arm elbow darts. So this is incredible. Oh, this is the dress version. Okay, and then over that is this coat. This is a great pattern. So okay, you've got the dress, right? The little fitted dress. I don't know if this is piping, some situation happening there. And then you've got this adorable coat with this removable collar. How great is that? And then here's the back. And again, look at all these, all this shaping. You have these shoulder seams uh, or darts. You have elbow darts again. You have back shoulder darts. Um, just three buttons, big patch pockets, three quarter sleeves. This is a great, great, great pattern. Great pattern. Obviously can't speak to how it's drafted um, or how it fits but yeah these these ladies look good you can tell very Jackie O right even the hair love it that is a great coat gosh I love making coats I just I don't have anywhere to wear them you know they do have all the sizes in one pattern too which is also really nice and then this is a dress, jumper, and a skirt. What? So fitted dress with French darts. Love a French dart. You've got the four front. Um, these look more like pleats. And then in the back, you've got the um, bodice darts here. And then the four. But why did we get away from four darts in the back? Like, why do they only do two now? Do they think that we're not as curvy? We're probably curvier than ever. Oh, so annoying. And then they, we also have this little, like, quarter, half circle skirt with big patch pockets. Same bodice. Um, and then we've got just the skirts. So you can do just the pencil skirt or just the, like, floaty skirt. So look how cute the jumper is. Love it so much. Look at that cinched in waist, man. They really loved a hip back in the day, didn't they? Very cute. That is quite the skirt. It doesn't look as full in the line drawings, but in these illustrations, that is like, I mean, maybe they have added petticoat or something, but that is, that is a lot. Do they have, let's see, D, no, they don't have anything for D, notions, A, B, C, D. Invisible zipper, hook and eye. Yeah. They don't say anything about petticoat or anything, but yeah, that's a very full skirt. Are all the sizes in one on this too? No, they split this one up. All right, so there's your little road uh, trip down memory lane. Um, now we're going into, really, is this it? We got six patterns, three vintage. We're already into the mommy and me, which I normally don't review at all. And then we're into accessories and kids clothes. Costumes, doll clothes, toys. I guess they really put a focus on holiday stuff. That is a really cute tree skirt. Um, yeah, and then this is Bird of Style, which I have yet to review. So, oops, can we go back to one? Um, so yeah, we really only got six patterns. Dang. So let's take a quick look at the mommy and me's, I guess. I um, feel like I got to give you guys some bang for your buck. Uh, three, let's see, I guess three through eight is for the little girl. This is why I don't do the mommy and me's. I don't understand already. I'm already confused. Extra small through extra large is for the women, I guess. And then you get this like three tiered dress with a big balloon sleeve. 
I don't know that I would ever buy a mommy and me pattern simply because I would feel like I obviously don't have a me, you know, I don't have a mini me. So I would never use the kids part. Does that feel wasteful? I don't know. It shouldn't. It should just feel like an extra. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why my mind goes there, but um, this is the only photo we get of people wearing it. This is the only one. Um, so if I'm going to analyze the woman's wear version, it's not looking good, guys. I mean, this is very wide neckline. You can see they filled it in with her hair a little bit, but this is like barely on her shoulder, you know, and probably gaping a little bit too. It does look like there's a little bit of gathers there, but grown on sleeve. And then this is added to that. And then this has no darts or pleats or anything happening to give it any shape at all. It's certainly very comfortable, but I mean, I don't know if it's the most attractive. Um, certainly looks cute when you're wearing it next to your, you know, precious little porcelain doll of a daughter. <laughs> but um, it feels like this is more of a children's design and they were like, let's just make it big enough for women too. And when didn't really translate. That's the vibe I'm getting from this one. The other one, oh, there's actually three. Okay. Is this pajamas? I hope so. Yes. Okay. Lounge dress. That's what to say. Thank goodness. Although, doesn't this look just like the Wilder dress, which is insanely popular. And every time I see it, like, uh, the listing, the website on their website, I'm like, this looks like pajamas. But then I see people's versions that they've made, like on their Instagram and stuff. And I'm like, this is so cute. It doesn't look anything like pajamas. So I really don't know how that happens. But you've got this little like drawstring neckline, not drawstring, but it's got, you know, gathers, um, a little button with a loop, elastic at the wrist. And then it's pretty much floor length, maybe high low. Yeah, bit of a high-low sitch happening. And then here's mom. Sure does look comfortable, right? I don't know about it in like a cotton, but sure, why not? It's a lot of fabric, right? What are we looking at? Uh, three, almost four yards for the longer version. B, is B the little girl's version? I'm so confused. Or is this just B? Does that look smaller? How does this work? Yeah, A is mom, B is kid. Huh. So, I mean, you're looking at eight yards of fabric? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Boy, they make this confusing. So you have your child sizes here and your missus sizes here. And each, each person, each sized person, a child and a woman, have two versions. Oh, man. And then they give you finished bust measurements, although they call them chest for a child, which that's interesting. But um, 34 inches for a child? That seems like a lot. Size three, is that 3T? I don't know anything about kids' clothes. You guys who are moms are probably like, this girl is like beyond ignorant in this topic. Yes, I am. I fully agree. I don't know anything. This is why I don't review these patterns because then I sound like, I sound like a dummy. Okay. We have aprons. Um, I actually do like the style of this apron, how it just crosses in the back. There's no ties to come undone or anything. And you have all these versions. So we've got this little cutie with the pocket. This one's more of like, you could make this for a guy. You know, it's like a grilling apron, like very manly out of canvas. Leather straps, maybe that would be cool. This one has some contrast and come on with the ruffles. Come on with the ruffles. They're a little bit long. For aprons but nonetheless here's all your versions aprons are cute okay then we've got this woman's apron this uh, these adore all the kids clothes so adorable we've got family pajamas okay which are more like a thermal set thermal underwear set knit pants and top I think they're probably using some kind of like rib knit or like I said, waffle knit, thermal, something like that. Super cute with a little Henley. A little bit hard to sew, but 
nonetheless. And then you've got cuffs, cuffs, and I'm sure there's a waistband to the tops. And the guys even have extra buttons here for, you know, when they go to the bathroom. I guess. I guess that's what that's for. Oh, man. This is really going off the rails here. Um, <laughs> this is why you guys stick out, stick it out to the very end because this is whenever things get sloppy. But we've also got oversized hoodies, pants, and booties is what they're calling this. Yeah, I'd say oversized. They've also got it Sherpa lined. Look how pretty this little fabric is, though. That is really cute, I gotta say. Um, so you get the dress, you get with the hood or without, you get this guy's top <laughs> and pants, and then you also get the slippers. So here she is all bundled up. Now she does look warm. Here's the guy. He looks warm and happy. Yeah, that's fun. And I'm sure that all the sizes come in one. Yep, so you can make one of these for everyone in your family. I mean, if we look at the envelope back, we have finished. No, they didn't give us finished sizing on this one. I was going to say that that 34-inch size 3, like, this one says 30. 30 inches. So you could probably make them for kids too, right? If I was reading the other thing right. All right. A tween wearable blanket. We've got a Regency style dress, which not going to lie, looks a lot like that red velvet one. Doll clothes, doll clothes. I mean, <laughs> what is this even so cute? You've got an animal that gives you a hug. You've got plush dolls, bears, and dinosaurs, and bunnies. And Yodas. Look at that. Look at that. And then animal towels. Fun. A tree skirt. These are always fun where you can like make your own um, cube like storage. And this one has this little hanging doodad. And this thing that goes underneath your machine. I have one of these. Um, I don't use it as much as I should. But it also comes with a machine cover. Um, and a little lumbar pillow, ironing board cover, like lots of fun stuff. This is also great um, for gifts, which I guess is the whole point, right? And that is not it because look how cute. Do the girls need this? Would the girls sleep on this under the blanket part? Hmm. Then you have the pet crate cover. Freaking cute. You have aprons for Mommy, Mini-Me, and her doll. I need to know. I need to know the people that sew this and that wear it. Where all three of them put on their apron and, you know, do whatever they do around the house or wherever they're going. Like, I need to know. Who, who, who is that person? Um... Accessories, uh, tabletop accessories and chair pads, <laughs> uh, quilted blanket and pillow. I wouldn't say that's quilted, but nonetheless, shades and balances still very much happening in Simplicity's world. Um, nurse and doctor, uh, doll clothes. So lots of really interesting things if you start to get into the depths of the holiday release, am I right? But when it comes down to it, we don't have that many new women's wear patterns at all. Um, considering these two are for menswear, granted, you could make them for a woman. Um, we've really only got three, and one of them is a, oh lord, what happened? Um, so that's a little bit disappointing, but considering there was a time when we would just skip seasons altogether during the pandemic, you know, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Thank goodness for Mimi G, though, because without her, my goodness, this is all we would have. Um, but that is going to do it for me today. Like I said earlier in the video, I would love to know you guys' thoughts. I have gone ahead and um, included a link to last week's First Impression Friday, which covered the Vogue Winter Collection. So if you missed that um, and want to, you know, 
geek out over more patterns with me, be sure to check that out. I've linked it in the description box for you as well. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.